Meg Whitman, don't say I was part of your family because you never treated me like I was. Third time to charm or a harm, I guess. Meg Whitman's former housekeeper holds a third news conference to explain and complain about her old boss. Why in the world do we need three news conferences for this? Everyone seems excellent. I, I get nothing but praise. Uh, I think the only people who are against me are the people who I'm running against. So I've really only heard positive stuff. Well, it's not all positive, but lots of response after Irvine's 19-year-old city council candidate appeared on yesterday's show. Some love him, some hate him. We'll let you decide for yourself. Plus... I made this proclamation. I said, if anyone here mentions politics again, or a political consideration for a decision to be made in this office, you won't be here next week. We do the right things for the right reasons, period. Tough on City Hall, tough on crime. City Attorney Carmen Chuchanda just cracked down on criminals in his first year in office. Now he's speaking out against the political machine. Our exclusive interview with the City Attorney. All the stories people are talking about and everything you need to know right now on The Filter. Hello again off the top. It's The Filter Forefront, our top four of the day, including... Do you ever fake it? But we'll begin with this. The saga of Meg Whitman's housekeeper, Nikki Diaz, won't go away. Why? Because she's back. With Gloria Allred by her side, Diaz needed to set the record straight again. I make my own decisions. I'm not anyone's puppet. I really thought about it before I decided to come up, speak out. Nobody made me do it. Meg Whitman? Don't say I was part of your family because you never treated me like I was. Diaz didn't take questions, and there are a few unanswered questions. How did Gloria Allred find out about this? How did she get involved? Allred wouldn't say, but she did say she's involved because her firm has represented employees in employment matters for more than three decades. Our contributors tonight, Megan Barth from ReaganBaby.com and Doctor of Social Ethics, Charlotte Laws. Our pictures are furnished by Skype. Charlotte, we'll start with you. Why the need for yet another news conference? Well, there is no need. I mean, all Red's purpose is political, in my view. It may also be that she wants to just be out there in the public eye and get more attention on herself. But, I, you know, this is a $6,200 claim. That's what this amounts to. It's like a small claim suit. This is not a lawsuit. And so basically what she's doing is she's jeopardizing her client. It's like for $6,200, she's coming forward and saying, let me prove I need $6,200. I committed felonies, and this is why I need the $6,200. If really it was about money, they would have sent a quiet letter to Meg Whitman and said, this is the money we want, and they probably would have gotten a check. As you know, I support Jerry Brown 100% for governor, but on this Nikki issue, I support Meg Whitman 100%. I don't think she's done anything wrong, and I think Gloria, Gloria Allred, as I said, now has to answer a lot of questions about how this all came about, and she also said today, essentially, that Nikki is not manipulated by me, that she's intelligent and independent. Well, if she's not manipulated by you and she can't be manipulated by you, then how can she be manipulated by Meg Whitman? All right. So all of a sudden, these contradictions are coming into play. Megan, what do you think? Well, I think there does need to be another news conference, but the news conference needs to take place the day after the election. Nikki needs to make sure that she uh, keeps going after Meg Whitman if that's really what this is all about and the $6,200. People should not forget about Nikki. And that's why I think that Gloria Allred has used her as a political pawn and to make sure that Gloria Allred gets some more press because she hasn't met a camera she doesn't like. And this is all for Jerry Brown's campaign trying to smear Meg Whitman. So the news conference needs to happen after the election and to keep pushing this, this you know, important issue forward and to the forefront. And Gloria Allred has jeopardized her client with deportation and taking away this woman from her three kids. Charlotte? Fact, it, all right, Charlotte, 15 seconds. Do you think Jerry Brown's involved in this? No, I definitely don't. But I do think it's possible that there are Democrats that did know about this in advance and that are in cahoots with Gloria Allred. All right. It's way too coincidental. It, it is awfully coincidental, any way you look at it. Let's move on. Did you know there are 5,100 registered sex offenders living in the city of Los Angeles? About 20% of those on parole or probation for felony crimes are prohibited by state law from living near a school or park where children <clears throat> gather. Of the 5,100, about 260 are homeless on the streets today. Some of the sex offender population has come to L.A. from other places because they have passed additional laws making it possible for some to find places to live. Megan, does Los Angeles need tougher laws when it comes to sex offenders? 
Well, if they pass tougher laws, then where do these people go? Do they go to the, the neighboring city and then the neighboring city has this problem as well and then they pass tougher laws? What really I think But that's why they came done, here. That's exactly why they came here for that very well, reason. Well, exactly. So where are they going to go next? It really doesn't address the problem and the categorization of these. And, and what I did find was in Texas, uh, out of the state capital, out of Austin in 2007, they, they passed a new law which actually uh, categorized sex offenders in a different way. Instead of a 18-year-old boy having sex with a 15-year-old girl and having the same penalty and categorization as a 35-year-old woman abusing a 5-year-old child, they categorized these sex offenders differently which allowed them perhaps a better opportunity to find housing or to find jobs. And that perhaps is what L.A. needs to do, is to maybe enforce the laws in a different way, change the laws in a different way so they can provide different categories for these sex offenders and make sure that the most egregious sex offenders have worse um, categorization than, uh, say, someone like an 18-year-old boy having sex with an underage girl. Sure. And, and then I think you can get down to recidivism rates at, at, at a better in a better method. All right, Charlotte, 45 seconds. What do you think? Well, I, I agree with the cate changing the categorization. And I come down on the side of practicality. I actually do agree with you, Megan, that this is a real problem because there's some neighborhoods where 90% of the apartments and houses are too close uh, to a school or a park, and therefore the sex offenders can't live there. So where are they supposed to live? I think that society needs to stop being so emotional about the issue and sit down and really analyze it and say, do we want a few people in this neighborhood or do we want to put you know, a few people in each neighborhood or do we want to put but them Charlotte, all together Charlotte, in Charlotte, one area? Charlotte, Charlotte, it is an yes. emotional issue. It is an emotional issue. I know issue. it is, but you know, you got to remember, you don't have a database for ex-murderers, so you may have 20 of them living on your street. You don't even know. So it's kind of like they're singled out, and they're not given that opportunity to find a place to live. So they end up on the street homeless, and then there's a better chance that they're going to cause more crimes in the future. Well, okay. I figure if we can track Lindsay Lohan's cocaine habit, we can track sex offenders. <laughs> well put. Who doesn't want a free lunch in life?